Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, Barry here again. Hey everybody, Barry here again. I'm going to do something really, really different today. So I am pretty much ready to do the bed of the truck now. And the radiator's in there temporarily, but I've got the rear suspension, all the rear frame and everything done. And I've been thinking a long time about doing something with pallet wood. And for anybody who knows these old 50s truck, this is 1957 Chev half ton truck. They all had wood floor in the bed. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I thought about doing like a herringbone style where the wood comes together at a 90 degree angle, but it sort of overlaps. And I'll get a picture up in the corner here of that. But I don't know if I wanna do it directly down the middle of the truck or go off sort of on an angle across just to take away some of the symmetry. Because as you can see, symmetry in at least the colors wasn't really a big factor in me building this truck. And no, it's not gonna be painted. It's gonna look just exactly as it is. And the only bit of paint is gonna be under the hood. Don't mind the rust because it's Newfoundland and it was left outside for one day in the rain. But the first step is gonna to be to tear down the pallets. And I'm gonna take any of the boards that are the same. So I'll be taking these boards here. I think they're around three inches or three and a half wide. Not necessarily these, but if they're in good shape, I'll take them out anyway. And I'm gonna be putting an underlay on the bed. I'll do a layer of half inch plywood first. That way I've got a nice, even, stable underlay. And then I'll nail or screw the boards down to that because I wouldn't want all my uh, boards coming together can be structural because there wouldn't be any studs to screw it to. So I think it'll make it a lot stronger and not be ridiculously heavy. So the first step is going to be to remove the boards. So from what I've seen, the hardest thing people have trouble with is getting the wood off the pallets without splitting it. This is one that I just tried to get off and it broke. And I found the best way to do it is to have a hammer on one end and this pry bar and pull them up at the same time. So I'm starting to get somewhere with it. I've tried a different, couple different ways now. And trying to draw the nails in without pulling them through the board or cracking the board seems to be the hardest way, or the hardest task, I should say. But it's not so bad. When I get them out of the inner edge board and the center, then I just pull it up and then you've got a full board. And I'm starting to get a few out like that. But I'm going to need a lot more pallets. I've got probably 10 or 12 boards and four pallets now. And uh, I think I'm going to need a, upwards of probably 30 or more. Huh, let's keep at it. Well, Making a little bit of progress. I've got the four pallets stripped and I've got a few boards out of it actually, it wasn't bad. That last one was in really good shape. And what's a little bit different about what I'm doing is I'm looking for the worn pallets. Like I'm not looking for anything that's got new boards on it. I'm not gonna be staining it, nothing like that. So what I'm looking for is a pallet set, you know, are a little bit rougher looking like this stuff here. 
Not something that's damaged. I don't want it to be split right down the middle or anything, but you know, something that shows its age. And the nice thing about every palette being different, like you can see here is probably six or seven different hues here, is when they're all stacked together, you're not gonna see all one color. It's not gonna look like laminate flooring where I just put it down and it's all the exact same color. You're gonna see that herringbone shape because of all the wear that's in the pallets. So we'll stack it together really quick and just lay it on the floor and see what it looks like. I'm gonna very roughly kind of put this together here and uh, just see what it looks like. So I've gotta stack these at 90 degree angles, but I'm not gonna be cutting them so they come together perfectly like this. They're gonna be sort of staggered. And you're gonna see that right here in the design when I start putting them together. This is just a very rough kind of a mock up right now, but it's starting to take shape already. And when I go to put them all together, I can mix and match which boards I want because I got two sort of peach color boards here. When I can change them out and do this just to get some more contrast. And I only need this to be six and a half feet long because that's what the length of the bed is. And it's probably gonna be probably six foot four or something like that when I'm done. But this is what it's gonna look like. Put this together. And this one here has the end part of it, but it was actually not. So I think it actually looks kind of cool. This one's a bit thinner, so I might not use that one. But, to get an idea, I think it's going to be really cool looking. Oh. I'm going to make sure I put them all in the correct orientation. So you can see here how I'm going to use a lot of board. So I've got enough here for about four feet down the middle. And it's going to need to be about six and a half feet, so I'm actually not doing too bad. And then I need enough to fill the corners too on each end. I cannot believe how cool that looks. You can see that it's got the zigzag in the middle. And obviously I'm going to pull all the nails out. But that's such a cool design. So hopefully you can see now what kind of design that I'm going for with the truck. You can see that the boards are just as weathered and sort of beat up as my old truck is, and that's the way I like it. Like I said, I'm gonna need more pallets, but it's not a big deal because I work here at CarQuest, and we get six-ish skids of freight every week, and they all come on pallets just like this. Sometimes we get the blue or orange green pallets and they're heavy-duty birch ones, and I would do all of those too if I had more, but this is what I'm gonna use. And you can see why I wanna put an underlay of wood under this because if I had to run studs across here, I would have to nail down each one of these boards to the stud. And it'd be very difficult when I might have a board here and a stud right here with no support at the end. And that'd be really, really difficult for me to sort of engineer to make sure that every piece is structural when I can just have a piece laid under and screw each one of them down to it. Well, I'm back. It's been a couple of days. I got a couple of different things done, but I found some more wood. I got some more pallet wood and stuff. Uh, it ended up being those blue birch pallets, so I don't know if it's gonna work exactly perfect, but hopefully we'll get some more of the regular spruce pallets in by the time I'm ready to do this. But I have a piece of plywood, and this is, I'm gonna say, half inch thick or so, something like that. And uh, yeah, it's just a regular piece of plywood. Nothing nothing shady or anything about it. It's just a, it's just a piece of plywood. and. That is going to go white side down and I'm going to cut the fender wells out and I'm going to cut out the shape of the fuel cell. Which is going to take a little bit of measuring and a little bit of cutting. So measure once, cut three times. It's kind of my rule. I don't know if that's right or not. Anyway, so I'm going to go lay it in place and just at least see if it even fits. Too wide, 
that's fine because I can narrow it. Oh no, we got to land right on top of the field side. Okay, first glance, not terrible. So obviously I won't be leaving it like this. It just looks stupid. I mean, the finish that's on it. But it's almost wide enough. Almost wide enough. But my pallet wood, I'll cut it so that it fits right out to the very edge. And it'll look really good. Big fan. Uh, I just need to take a few measurements now for obviously the length because it's 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 a little bit too long and hi chloe and i need to yeah measure this out and the fuel cell is gonna be a big one but i'll cut the length hey you have a cup of water thank you uh yeah i probably should have brought a circular saw let's do measuring first okay so i'm here just innocently about to cut the pan floor and my daughter Chloe comes over all sassy and at what come over here so you can show them if you're gonna say this truck is a he calls it a doo-doo box <laughs> <laughs> apparently it's a doo-doo box now news to me I could cry I thought it was like concourse d'elegance, but no, it's a doo-doo box. <laughs> That's what you called it, not me. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I gotta clean this place up. I just tripped. Okay, measurements are done, and I'm thinking that it's going to work really well. This will be the cutout for the fuel cell. Here is obviously that much that's going to go away. My wheel wells are measured out, and, well, there's nothing to see up there. But I basically just have to cut inside the lines, or on the lines, or whatever. According to my measurements, this should work just fine. Uh... I don't have anything here right now to cut it besides a jigsaw, which is just torture. So Dwayne has a skill saw and a compound miter saw and he's gonna bring it tomorrow. And we're gonna cut it up then. Okay, so I've got all my pieces of wood right here and Chloe's gonna help me. So we're just gonna lay it out and have a look, see what it's gonna look like. Obviously none of this is cut out yet. Nothing here is cut out, but we just wanna have a look and get an idea. I'm not sure how well this is gonna work because the boards are a lot wider than the babies, I'm going to have to cut them off, but right, Chloe, sit around them. Just glue them up and nail them up. So how they go is, okay, that one, put up so it stops right there. Yeah, there we go. You see how it's going. It's zigzagged up? I'm going to take another one. This one's kind of like zigzagged. Yeah, that's cool. You can put that side down. Grab another one. Watch out for the nails. 
Thinner. Hmm. I'm gonna have to kind of mix and match them so that it looks correct. Hmm. It never looks correct. Well, are you calling us a poop box? No, you called it sure? that. I think it was you. Oh, no, they put a sticker on it. Hey, you know what I'm curious? <laughs> right. ah, ah. Did you get a splinter? No, it's actually nailed. Did you? Was it electrical? No, that was <laughs> Man, I think this is going to be sweet. Oh, I like it. Is this going to have nails or not? Uh, yeah. On the back side. Not on the back side. Between the safe stand and a bubble wrap down. Okay, but that's that though. Looks pretty cool. I like it. I don't like how just stacking up in front. But... I don't like how it goes up. It looks well, like, yeah, it's it not. It looks like an old person's bridge. That's funny. An old person's bridge to a patio. When I go up, when I when I get them, I got to cut them off on a diagonal here so they butt up against. That's gonna be cool though, hey. I guess. Man, you're way good at this. Look at, yeah, but it's it's called herringbone. Because it zigzags in the middle, yeah, and all the boards come together. Up. Well, because they're too long right there, and I just still wanted to get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, Ow! Myself. Yeah, you dropped the board on me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, this is. I think we got. Yeah, it's, it's a bit um, mm, vertical. It into a wand. Like a magic wand. <laughs> Yes? Oh yeah, because every last fiber of wood is magic. Okay, all right, I think that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a ramp now. I don't think it would be very good for like a motorcycle. I'm not hit a jump off it or anything. Dwayne dropped me off his compound miter saw and I'm gonna cut up this wood. I want to stay away from the nails, and I don't want to draw them all out, so I'm going to cut my 45 on one end, away from the nails. And then when I get, like say if I cut this one on this 45 for that side, when I determine the length that it needs to be, I'll cut it off straight on this end. That way I can cut off this batch of nails, I can cut off that batch of nails, and only have to deal with two instead of all of them. Because these are wicked hard to get out, where they're like serrated or whatever. So I'm going to cut all of them on a 45 and just get rid of the few that I don't need.
Okay, Dwayne help me. Dwayne's the only reason this is working well, because I measured everything wrong. Uh, so this is cut out. I still got this on the truck though. And now we're trying to smack it down over the everything, yeah. Why does this not look level? Eh, whatever. Okay. Is it gonna work? All right, so we gotta push down. I think that one's not sitting well. I said it earlier on the video, I was like, measure once, cut three times. Yeah. And it's right. Um, <clears throat> what I was thinking about doing, you see how the bolts are there? Yeah. I was thinking about taking the bolts out and then drilling down to the wood. Oh, okay. Down, yeah. down. But you gotta do your herringbone pattern on there first, right? Yeah. No, the only suggestion I have is just do your herringbone, cut this out, right? And then we'll get the uh, my round over bit on the router, and then it'll like, round over into the. Really? It'll make it look classy, right? Like, it does seem to be some class. Yeah. Wow, dude, that can't work as work. And then, like I said, wow. yeah, you could put something here. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I'm like, if oh, the only piece of strapping or something just fell yeah. in. Yeah. Trying to get nails in or something. And then you could, I would round that over too. Just have that round it. Not that class. That would look nice. <laughs> This is awesome. I can't believe it worked. I made it. I'm not a wood person. I got a lot of splinters before, but I'm no good at woodwork. <laughs> well, we need your router thing now. Not now. Oh, oh. router. Yeah. Um, I, I do all your, do your pads on it first. Yeah. Oh yeah, as long as I square this, I could just cut it to the length, didn't I? Yeah. Sick. And then just go. Yeah, so as long as I get the middle one right, I can fill in the length, basically, couldn't I? Yep. Huh. And as long as they're the same distance, the same distance from the bed here. Yeah, that one will be cut off there. Yeah. Right on the nails. Do your next one just up, 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 up. Yeah, this is cool. <clears throat> oh, it's very five. Front. I wouldn't mind it coming to a point at the front. Yeah. So. I would more worry about that shit 
should be. Yeah. <laughs> perfect night. I might have to cut some of the some of the rest. Yeah. Oh, from this corner around there. All right. Fill in the gap. Got too short for this truck. There. Now is that offset? Yeah, it's off center now. I don't really care if it's off center either. Okay. Or if it goes across, I don't care. Yeah. As long as it's. Oh, well, once you put your two pieces. Well, actually. Yeah. yeah, it'll follow. Yeah, you can cross center. It would actually look kind of, you know. Yeah, intentional. Yes. Hmm. Okay, I like it. We're finally getting somewhere. So Dwayne came back and gave me a huge hand getting this thing lined up and trimming it. All my measurements were off by just a little bit, either too short, too small, whatever. So I ended up having to trim out sort of a half inch or so on each side the length was fine so that's cool over here i sort of overshot and didn't cut enough out so we cut off another half inch in here and over there and now the gap in here isn't too bad so of course i'm going to try to fill it with these boards like this it being sort of bowed like this i might have to change the angle of the boards to get them to match up perfectly up here but this is about what we're going to start with. So I'm thinking about starting sort of in the middle like this. If I can get these two boards to be perfectly 90 degrees, then every board following it will be also. So that's, that's a really, really good start. But I'm going to end the video off here because this one's getting up there in time now. And I don't want one big, huge, hour-long video getting on everybody's nerves, droning on. So I'm going to call this part one. So in the next video, obviously, I'm going to go ahead continue finish this up that way we'll be able to go through the process and won't be all time lapse and you know just background noise so we'll get on with the next one in a couple of days so thanks for checking out the channel thanks to all the youtube members and patrons if you want to check out my patreon it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods and my youtube members link is down here and also my teespring store if you want to check that out, I've got a link in the description and I got some hoodies and some shirts and all kinds of cool stuff on there. If you want to check it out, It'd be a huge help to the channel and thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.